My name is Jack Cox. I'm going to instruct you how to do many different splints and casts in a series of videos. But first, I'd like to explain the materials that we use here at Main Campus at Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. And I'll describe the other materials that they use at the other clinics and facilities, such as orthoglass and rolled plaster repairs. Next, I'd like to describe the techniques and methods that I use and that you will see in the videos. On a side note, no matter which material you may use, the general techniques are the same. Now I'd like to describe the different materials we use here at Main Campus. To my left, we have plaster of Paris, and to my right, we have fiberglass casts. For the plaster of Paris, the materials we use is first, two different style base wraps. We have two, three, four, and six inch style clips. Then we have a four inch and six inch style Velcro. For bread roll, we have three, four, and six inch. And then we For have plaster, it comes in two different styles. In the blue box is a fast setting, which dries in five to eight minutes. It's a five inch by 45 inch. In the green boxes, we have three different sizes. We have a three inch by 15 inch, a four inch by 15 inch, and a five inch by 30. The dry time is two to four minutes. We also have tape and scissors and stocking up. Now for our fiberglass cast. We have one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch in colored black stocking up. For our cotton, we have two, three, and four inch. And for our white fiberglass, we have two, three, and four inch. And then we have eight different colors to choose from. In the clinics, you may have other colors that may be available. Finally, you have a receptacle such as a wash basin. For plaster of Paris, you should use warm water with a temperature ranging from 70 to 75 degrees. For fiberglass cast, you should use cold water. If you are in different departments or facilities than main campus at HM Health, Wake Forest Baptist, rolled plaster of Paris may be available to you. In the application of this material, the general technique when splinting or casting still apply. To apply this material, select the material and size needed, apply padding to the patient with a total of three to four layers, immerse the roll in warm water, and squeeze the excess water out. Using the rolling out technique, roll or create sheets with a total of 8 to 10 layers. And if you are creating sheets, use an ace wrap to secure the plaster. Next, we have ortho glass. The general technique for splints applies to the application of this material. To apply this material, select the size and length needed for the extremity. This is important. Once you cut the material, make sure you cover the rough edge or stretch the felt over the cut fiberglass. This can cause damage to the patient's skin if left uncovered. If applying padding to the patient, have a total of two layers using the 50-50 technique. When you are ready to apply the orthoglass, immerse the material in cold water and squeeze the excess water out. Secure the material to the extremity with an ace wrap. Once you have decided on the splint you're going to do, you need to pick the correct style and size of plaster you're going to use and correctly, properly fit it to the patient. Once you have done that, you are ready to now to dip your plaster. Hold the plaster by both ends, dip it into the water, then I say do the three S's. Squeeze the excess water out, stretch the plaster back out, and squeegee the excess water out. You want to make sure your plaster is nice and smooth. And now it is ready to be applied to the patient. Here is a close up of some plaster that has been dipped. On the left is plaster that has not been stretched or squeegee. As you can see, the plaster has wrinkles and is not smooth. On the right is plaster that has been stretched and squeegee. Doing this fuses the sheets of plaster together, making it a solid slab. Also, it removes any wrinkles and makes the plaster smooth. Next is a demonstration of this. I have let these dry ahead of time. This is a plaster that has not been properly squeegeed or smoothed out. Notice that it is bendable and can break. This plaster has been smoothed out and squeegeed and is hard. Once you've applied it to the patient, you want to make sure the ends are folded over or smoothed out so it's nice and smooth. If 
When the plaster and fiberglass is smooth, it does not cause harm to the patient. Notice that when this fiberglass is smooth, it doesn't cause harm to the patient. However, when it's serrated and not smoothed out, it can cause harm to the patient's skin. When casting and splinting, there are several complications that may occur. First, the fiberglass and plaster of Paris produces an exothermic heat as it is drying, so burns can occur. During casting and splinting, the patient is at risk due to the water being too hot, increased number of layers, poor padding, or the extra fast drying material itself. Make sure you take caution. If the patient has increased pain or complaining of a burning sensation getting worse, remove the cast or splint and assess the patient. Second, the patient may be at risk for pressure sores. This can occur due to a couple of reasons. When the rubber, cotton, plaster, or casting material is not smooth, pressure sores can occur. So make sure the material has no wrinkles. Take caution to your fingertips in the material while drying. So keep your fingertips off the material as it is drying. If you must use your fingertips, keep moving them throughout the fracture site area to maintain your mold as the material is drying. Another reason is poor padding, causing the material to be exposed to the skin. If the patient is complaining of increased pain, remove the cast or splint and assess the patient. Third, the patient might be at risk for ischemia. There is a reduced risk for splinting compared to casting, but still is a possibility. Do not apply any of the material too tightly. You can reduce the risk by instructing the patient to ice or elevate the extremity. Remember to instruct them to elevate above the heart. If there is a high risk of ischemia, have the patient reschedule the follow-up visit sooner. Remember to check pulses. If the pulse is lost, then it's too late. If the patient is complaining of increased pain or too tight, remove the cast or splint and assess the patient. Fourth, the patient is at risk for infection. Make sure to instruct them to place nothing inside the cast or splint and have them keep it dry and clean. Before casting and splinting, make sure to clean the breed and dress all the wounds. If the patient has a significant wound or increasing pain, remove the cast or splint and assess the patient. Again, this is important. If there are any complaints of worsening pain, take the cast or splint off and assess the patient. This is the 50-50 method when rolling web roll or cotton during splints and casts. What you have is a 50-50 overlay exposing a dark side and a light side. This makes the web roll and cotton even throughout the whole splint and cast and will not expose skin to plaster or fiberglass. Now that I taught y'all the correct way how to roll the 50-50 method, I'm going to show you the incorrect way. A lot of people, when they're rolling, they tend to get in a hurry and do not get correct layers nice and even throughout the whole arm. What you see is a lot of people roll in one area and they're also very fast. So then you have four or five layers right here in one spot and then they'll come down this way. And the thing is, you'll see right here where there's only like one layer and sometimes right, right here you have some skin showing. And then that's the only layers they'll do. But this is the incorrect way how to do it because you can easily burn a patient. When rolling bony promises such as elbows, onostyloids, knees, and heels, you need to do a fan fold method and then capture it with a figure eight. How you begin is to start, you just ended the 50-50 method. Go over the bony prominence, fan fold it back so you have three layers right there. Do a figure eight. And this has five, four layers protecting the bony prominence. As you see as I'm rolling the web roll, uh, I use a method what I call rolling out, not in. When you roll in, you tend to fight the material as you're rolling around the patient's arm. As you use a roll out method, you're allowing the material to flow freely through your hand. You can use this in the application of fiberglass, cotton, web roll, ace wrap, curl X, clean wrap, and even coban. 
if you're ever rolling uh, curl X, cotton roll, web roll, fiberglass, rolled plaster, you always want to let the material roll freely through your hand. But people always ask about ace wrap tension. So when you're rolling ace, ace wrap or coban, what you want to do is pull a little tension, and then what I do is let it go freely around my hand. So pull a little tension and then roll freely the hand, pull a tension, roll freely. What you don't want to do is roll too loose because then the material will just fall off the patient and too tight because it'd be too constricting. Now I'm going to talk to you about the technique how to roll around the thumb when doing a thumb spiker. What you want to do is start the wrist, go all the way around the hand, and do a three quarters cut, cutting away from the patient. All right, go away around the hand again, and then around the thumb. This time you want to cut right here at the MP joints, just a quarter cut, and then lay nicely around the thumb. You go around the thumb three times. That was one, two, three, you go back around the hand and then around the MP joints again. Three quarters cut away from the patient. Capturing all this down that you cut, cut already. And then go down 50-50 for the rest of the splint. This is the owner gutter technique. You want to have the patient have an extended wrist about 30 degrees. And then you make a thumb hole with your web roll. Go around the thumb one time. And then what you want to do is do a three quarters cut. Go around the fingers one time. And what you're doing is layering your web roll 50-50. Do a half cut. Then three times around the fingers, one, two, three, a three quarters cut coming down, and then twice around the thumb. One, two, and then down 50-50. So again, we have once around the thumb, a uh, three quarters cut, a half cut three times around the fingers, the fourth and fifth digit, the three quarters cut coming down, two times around the thumb, and down 50 50. This is how to correctly roll around the thumb. Usually for cast, I start around the wrist. So, what you want to do is pull up your fiberglass, cut right out the thumb, cutting away from the patient. Cut all the way to the edge to usually when you have a half inch left. Okay. And then fan fold on the back side, twist about 180 degrees, and then come back and then fan fold it on the other side. So again, pull up, cut to about a half inch and you see these sprigs right here those all become sharp okay so you want to protect the patient's skin so fan fold or fold twist about 180 degrees tucking all those sprigs in and then come back and fold that edge and then go down 50 50. this is the conclusion of this video I want to take the time and highlight some key takeaways from the videos. First, preparation is key in any procedure that you may do, whether it be a laceration repair or a splint. Second, no one applies casts or splints the same way. The way I demonstrate and roll is a combination of techniques from multiple doctors and techs that I've learned from, from over the years. The basics are what matters, which when it comes to splinting and casting is to keep the patient safe. Which brings me to the final point. Lastly, the patient's safety should come first. 
Even though the casting and splinting may be a small task and may seem easy, doing it wrong can cause harm to the patient's skin and can cause complications that a patient may require additional procedures to fix the problem. I hope that these videos and information was helpful and that will guide you when you apply your future cast or splints. Good luck and thank you for your time. This is the conclusion of this video.